What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the HGST, basically the Hitachi Travel Star Z7K500. This one comes at 7200 RPM and the uh, interesting thing about this is it's single platter and also SATA 3 or 6 gigabits per second. I saw this as a shell shocker on Newegg one day and I thought, well, why not? Anyways, this is the first 7200 RPM magnetic drive that is that comes in the form factor of 7 millimeters. I will show you how thin this thing really is. I was completely amazed. I'll show some comparisons later. In addition, this is the first 6 gigabits per second interface on a magnetic drive. I know some of you may be saying, yeah, the Seagate Momentus XT is, is SATA 6, but keep in mind that is a hybrid drive and this one is not. This one's strictly magnetic. I thought this would be an interesting addition to my MacBook because of its low power consumption and its stated performance. We'll find out more about that later in this video. Here you can see just how thin this thing really is. That was a Samsung 830 series SSD and this is a Apple's OEM drive. The OEM drive is 9.5 millimeters thin. Don't quote me on that, I may be wrong, but it is significantly thinner. I know 2.5 millimeters isn't too much thinner, but it, is, it can make a big difference when you're looking for a hard drive solution and you have a thinner notebook, for example. Let's start this performance overview by taking a look at Apple's factory drive. This is negotiated at three gigabits per second, has a QDEP of 32, and is 7200 RPM. This is the 750 gigabyte hard drive that comes as a built to order option. Seen here, this drive is getting around 100 read and write, which isn't bad. It's actually pretty good considering it's a magnetic drive and, and whatnot. With that said though, 100 read and write is definitely not enough for me personally. As soon as you use solid state drives, um, this kind of thing, this kind of performance is just not up to par, but 100 read and write is definitely good enough for a storage solution. All right, enough of benchmarking the known. Let's take a look at the star of the show. Both of these drives are made by the same manufacturer and looking at their labels, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart without the Apple logo, of course. I'm gonna be testing this super slim Hitachi using my ever faithful OWC data doubler. Turning them to the side and taking a look at their profile, you can definitely see the difference. Let's go ahead and get this Z7K500 thrown in the data doubler made by OWC and get it reinstalled into my system. If you've watched any of my past videos, you've seen that I don't usually screw everything down, but in this case, I'm gonna be using this as my daily driver and I will be installing it properly. Let's get right into it. This drive is definitely negotiated at six gigabits per second which is cool. Um, the QDEP is the same, 32, and it is also coming up as a 7200 RPM drive. The negotiated link speed reads at six gigabits per second, but how does this translate performance-wise? Taking a look at Blackmagic disk speed test, it doesn't translate very well. It actually is 10 megabits slower than the OEM drive. This isn't a very big deal to me. I purchased this drive because it was cheap and the promise that it is low power consumption. So when I'm mobile with my MacBook Pro, um, I wanted to see if that low power consumption had any effect on my battery life. I have yet to have tested that in any sort of depth and I plan on maybe updating the description of this video with how this drive has affected my battery life. Now that all this internal testing has been done, I wanted to do a quick test of how this drive performs externally via USB 3.0. Um, the first performance overview you'll be seeing is the OEM drive. Uh, you see a around 100-ish, which is about 10 megabits faster than the Z7K500 internally. So uh, the OEM drive performs fairly well as an external drive solution. Here's where the Z7K500 really shines. I have this in a USB 3.0 external enclosure and you can see for yourself that this is performing really well at about 110, 115 megabytes per second. So if you were looking for a solution that was fairly fast and had a decent amount of space for one of your external enclosures, I think this might take the cake. One thing I didn't test was the drive's throughput via Thunderbolt. Um, I may test that, but it's unlikely as this drive is in my system now as my daily driver. Um, I leave it up to you as the viewer to uh, take the chance in that. But that said, I don't imagine that this drive performing any better via Thunderbolt as USB 3 is a pretty good indication of how this drive will perform on that platform. Anyways, that about does it for me, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video, and I hope you're all doing great. Thank you.